Hi everybody, welcome back, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modern Bench, part four now of the build of this uh, Apache from Tacom. This is the E variant, so uh, the Guardian I think it's called. So um, where did we get to in part three? We were doing this photo etch, which is an absolute nightmare because it's not very nice. We had a proper good old rant about some sprue nibs on these bits here. As you know, um, I expect I'll have a rant in every one of these videos because I keep finding stuff. This here, um, these, these here fine you had to take out some of the material at the back to get the photo etch to fit but in the end it fitted in these here i had to take out a lot of material to get the photo etch to fit and then these actual frames don't fit in the recess so all in all this here is just horrible um, and you can see the photo etch is just it's horrible i just hope on the real thing these vertical veins of aluminium get all dented and knocked about and that because when you look at these i mean look at that it's it's awful um it just looks awful. So if you're watching this, Edward, which I very much doubt you are, but if you are, we need replacement panels to go in there. Perhaps, um, you know, just one piece of photo etch with the rim on it, not having to use this piece of plastic because it's awful. Um, and don't make your photo etch the same size as Tacom's photo etch because it's too big to fit in the plastic part. So make your photo etch a little bit smaller. But I'm sure that um, Edward or someone will make a much better job of that than they have here. Uh, so we've gone in and painted the inside in our Boeing, I call it Boeing blue now, um, that light blue colour. So that's all done in there in the wheel bays and I've also done it on the side of the fuselage as well, you can see in here. And then overnight I had this clamped in place, so that's now glued into the fuselage at the back and at the, at the seams here. So nice and solid and now we're going we're gonna to have to build the gun before we put this panel in, so I'm not fitting that one yet. But it's, uh, it's just there for now, just to see how it goes. So... Um, Basically, we are coming along very, very nicely. Um, I think I mentioned, didn't I, about fitting this. I can show you now. Um, if you put this sponsor on, as they tell you to do in the instructions, like so. I've, I've already carved some plastic away from this. It's going to make life a bit easier. You will see that you cannot get this in. You... you it won't go in because of the, the shape of it. So what you're going to have to do, I think, is carve away some of this tab here. So just carve away some of that there, and that should allow me then to swing it in. There we go. So that's what you need to do if your sponsons are fitted. Carve away some of that there. I have also reduced the thickness of the plastic here a bit at the, at the root. But the way it's made, it sort of carries on with its taper. So it's wider here than it is there. So then obviously it won't slide in. You've got this, this cut out here in this sponsor. So push it back in like that. Slot it round and then it goes in. Just like that. So there's my little tip there. Another thing I found on the other side. Uh, if we put this one on here. This is going to be a major, well not a major bit of work, but it's going to be a bit of work we have to do. Um, this one here, you've got this piece on the top, goes on there, so you've got the two halves of the actual wing that itself, and you've got this piece on the top. And that's going to go in there, and that forms, you need a nice seam in there. Okay, it's, it's, it's done on a panel line, but I've noticed that the actual, this sponsor is actually holding it up. You can see it's holding it up there. So what I'm going to do is just reduce, I'm going to remove some material, I think, from here to allow the um, winglet to go slightly down in. You can see here what they've done. You can see it there. They've actually, they've actually stepped it up. So you can see you've got a flat area here and then it steps up there. Whereas on here, it actually steps down. So when you actually come to fit this in, you end up with gaps. So I'm going to take a knife and just scrape away some plastic from there and just a quick run over with a sanding stick. Just remove the burr from the edge and see if that's improved things at all. Hopefully it will have done. And there we go, straight away you can see we have a much smaller step at the front there. Um, yeah, I believe also Yeah, 
there we go. It's um, it is fitting a bit nicer, but it's going to need Mr. Surfacer because it's a little bit gappy. But you know, to be honest, to be fair to tack him, I don't know how else that you would tackle that. Just uh, just get some plastic off of that area. If you take too much, it doesn't really matter. It's underneath, a bit of Mr. Surfacer works wonders. There we go, that's a lot nicer now, it's it's more flush on the top. Um, I just need to take some material away from here, from the radius on the leading edge, just like so. Just to allow it to go in a bit smoother, and this should be it. I'm going to knock them off in a minute. There we go. That's a lot nicer. It's fitting in the fuselage nicer. And we've got a much smaller step then for that panel going in there. And obviously they need to be horizontal. So we'll make sure we've got them horizontal as well. So there we are. You do have actually in the instructions on the back. We have a, a view straight on so you can see they are dead horizontal so we'll make sure we get that situation going as well so um there we are right it's, i'm looking at it i'm thinking it may need some plastic removed from the bottom here to let it sit lower down it should, it's a brand new kit it, should, it shouldn't need this but, uh, yeah, it's fitting nicer. You've got this line here on the fuselage. It's fitting nicer under that now as well. That little bit removed. But it's a case of getting it clamped and held in place and everything, and it'll all be good. So, you can see it wants to sit up higher for some reason. So there we go. Uh, when you come to do these winglets, um, don't forget you've got rivets on there. Be careful not to ruin them when you sand it. And also this end here, don't worry about it. There's a plate that goes on there with a lot of detail in it. I haven't fitted it because you've got this stupid little pitot tube sticking it here, which is going to get broken off. And there's another one on this end panel, which is even finer and sticks out the back. So don't put them on yet. So um, there we go. Right. You can see there are undercarriage bays. Why I did them in that Boeing colour. Because uh, they need to be done. Right, so let's um, let's push on. The other thing I've done is the chrome, the chrome for the undercarriage legs and everything. That's all done. And what I did while I was at it, I got the this is the rear support for the tail wheel. So I got that one out and did that at the same time. And also this is the jack for the rear elevator. So I did that one at the same time as well. Uh, saves you having to keep getting your gloss black and chrome out and everything. So when you do this, when you do this um rotor head here, the spindle, the chrome bit on there, do them at the same time. So that's my little bit of advice and it saves you having to keep doing your chrome work. Right, let's have a look at what else we can do now. So <clears throat> now we're at the point of needing to paint the undercarriage because obviously the undercarriage legs are going to go up inside the sponsons and we want to be able to paint them. Now there's a lot of talk online about Helo Drab and what colour it really is and what colour Apaches were and everything. If you go into Google and just put A64 Apache in images and have a look, they're, they're all different and they're, a lot of them are very, very beaten up. Um, if I think of it, I'll put some pictures now, you will not believe your eyes, you know, that I, I can't see any green in them. <laughs> um, but basically there's this Hilo drab colour, which is like a very, very dark green drab, which is black grey. And, and, and I've made my own mix and I've got the colour here. Now, obviously, seeing the colour on camera is ridiculous. It's just, you know, you're not, you're not going to see it. But basically, that's where we are. And I'm quite happy with that because, obviously, we can fade it and pre-shade and post-shade and all that. So I just want a basis to go on. Well, this, this, is, um, this is H78, Mr. Hobby, OK? Um, and the only reason I'm using this is because I've got lots of it. So I would use Tamiya XF62, whatever it is, but I'm using this because I've got lots of it. Um, so I'm going to use a pipette, which I don't normally do. I'm going to get a 
paper towel so as not to make any mess. So the ratio I've come up with is four to two to one. So it's four of that one to two of the XF1 black to one of the XF10 flat brown. So if we start off with a pipette and we go to four millilitres, so that's, that's it. we'll do two lots of two millilitres, okay? So up to there. That's one and a half. Is it going to reach two? Yes, it is. So we've got the two millilitres. So we're going to there with that one. Now some people will say, oh yeah, but you've got paint left in there, so it's not a true two millilitres. You do it. I'm not worried about that. I'm really not worried about that. Uh, so then we go into the paint again and pick up. We'll be very carefully because we can't see where the level is. We just got. There we go. We can just see it coming up there. I doubt you can see it on the camera, but I can. So that's four millilitres. In fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go six. Because I want a nice mix of this. So we go six to three to one and a half. There we go. So that's that. We'll put that pipette over there. And we will put the lid back on our paint. So we've got six millilitres in there of the olive drab. What I'm going to do now is get my jar of dirty thinners and just and just pick up a load of dirty thinners pump it through there and it should clean the pipette out. Now I've seen a lot of people use pipettes once only and then they chuck them out which in this day and age I don't think is the right thing to do. I don't like using pipettes for picking up paint for that very reason. Um, <clears throat> you know single use plastics and all that jazz. I don't agree with it. But that's just me. You may see things differently. Okay so there's that pipette practically clean so we can put the top back on there. This is a brand new jar of XF1. So we're going to get three. I need to make sure this is properly stirred. Oh, it's not a brand new jar. I thought it was. Properly stirred and get our brush cleaned off. So we are now going to go three millilitres, which is up to there. So I'll probably go one and a half twice, to be honest. One and a half. Here we go into there and then another one and a half into there and then I'm going to do the same again clean the pipette and then I'll be back okay so now we've got the brine we've got the pipette cleaned out so again we're going to go one and a half so one and a half into there and hopefully this will be the right colour hopefully <laughs> he says so we'll stick our pipette in there just let that soak for a while we're going to put the top back on our brown okay so just to clarify that was I've done a different ratios but it's four to two to one and we'll see how this looks so we'll put the lid on and we'll see how this comes out so obviously we can add some thinners to it now if we want to and make it airbrush ready but you can see there we've got the the dark color all right, now it's better to go a little bit light, darken it up for some post shading or whatever, or you could go a little bit dark and then bring it back for, for um, post shading. It's up to you what you do. But um, basically that is how I have mixed my Hilo Drab. I'm gonna take my dirty pipette, clean the outside, 
Hadi bakalım şimdi labirint sinerji. Into there. That should be good to go. For spraying. I think I've got a parcel coming. Jess is starting to go crazy. So there we are. We've now got airbrush ready. Helo drab. In the bottle. Now I did want to order some from Premium Hobbies. Some um, MRP. I think it's 174. Out of stock. I found some of the AK stuff, but people want ridiculous amounts of money um, to post it. They want like £2.20 for a pot of paint and £3.50 to post it. It's like, what? So uh, there we go. So there's our helo drab. Happy with that. <clears throat> so we can get the undercarriage legs painted now. And um, I'll have to give them a prime first. But I'll do that in black. And then, um, and then I'll come back and we'll see how they look. So now we can see that's all painted up. So I've got the undercarriage legs done. They've been primed in Mr. Service of Black and then given a coat of my mix of the Hilo, um, Hilo Drab. I've done the actual legs as well with the chrome bits on them. Um, and I've unmasked them straight away because they were only actually clear coated probably an hour and a half, two hours ago. And I didn't want to leave the masking tape on there because sometimes it can attack the paint if it's not fully cured or the, the um, aqua gloss. So um, there we go. So that's that all done. Um, so yeah, I've also done that uh, that little chrome bit there, as I said, for the that's for the um, stabilator actuator or the elevator, whatever you're going to call it. And then we got the one there for the rear, the tail wheel. So uh, all good, all unmasked, and all ready to just dry out now. So they're going to need to be left to dry. They're going to get a dry brush and a bit of an oil wash just to sort of pick up the detail, because once it's all fitted up inside. Um, you can see that this leg here is going to go all the way up into that hole, which you can see way up in there, which is way up in there. So you're not going to be able to get to it to do anything with it. So uh, we'll deal with that afterwards. So um, we'll deal with it beforehand, should I say, not afterwards. So there we go. Um, I've also got to go around these with some Mr. Surfacer just to get rid of the gaps because there's gaps there. Um, and then push forward. Uh, I think fitting all that is going to be a lot of fun because as you know as I, t as I said in part three getting the undercarriage legs in with it's just a nightmare but before I can fit these I need to do that and before I do that I can't, I've got to do the gun so I suppose next on the list is going to be the gun um, I have actually where is it is it in here nope what have I done with it it's the um, the ammo belt which feeds the gun I've put it back in the bag it has to be bent uh, I've seen a couple of people do this build and they've just left it straight but it has to have a sort of bend in it where it goes down into the gun so I've put a bend in it like you can see there but what I did I, I put it a couple of bits of plastic car to put a bend in it and then I put it in some boiling water and it was too hot and you can see it's softened the detail on there I'm not worried about it too much because you're not really going to see it you can hardly see any of it in there but um you have been warned probably don't go as hot as I did and maybe just sort of get it in some hot water and then hold it yourself um, but uh, it does it takes on the shape lovely but as you can see I've ruined the most molded on detail so um there we go um, it would be nice if I mean Edward haven't done anything for this yet I don't believe but it would be nice if Edward did a photo etch one of these which is empty it looks much better then without the bullets in it so um you'll see that you know see all the, the light through I'm sure they will because they normally do. I've got some um, in the, in other photo etch sets, but I've also got the kits to go with them, so I don't really want to use them. But uh, that's going to look absolutely fine because you can see that when the gun when the gun is in place, um, you, you can't really see any of it. You can see there's a little bit of it you can see behind there, but it's the, everything around it just hides it. So I'm guessing now the next thing is going to be the gun, and then we can get on and. I'm also looking at maybe if I can make the gun removable. Um, maybe put a couple of slots in there and a couple of tabs on the gun so you can sort of put it in and then turn it. We shall see. But uh, I'll look at that when we get there. So do do do. Here's the gun going together here. So it looks like a fairly simple construction, but I do believe it's quite a, quite a complex little bit. So um, I'll get some parts off the sprue and then we'll have a look. 
Okay, so once again we've decided to chop and change the build sequence about. I've looked at actually making this removable and it's going to be very, very difficult. I may give it a go, we shall see. But um, I've decided to change the build sequence slightly because what they're asking us to do is assemble this around the gun. And I've decided to, decided to assemble it on its own. It's going to clip, it's going to clip onto there. Onto that frame, which is easy enough to do. You can see you can clip it on there. And that's fine. So that enabled me to glue it together, get it into this ring to make sure it stays round. And then what I did was put some super glue on the inside just to back up the glue joints. So um nice and solid now. So that's good. Um just to show you. Here we go. The the glue is all backed up. So um Let's get on with this assembly. So we've got the barrel going together, the barrel and the breech going together with the uh, ammunition belt. And this ammunition belt sort of sits in here and you can see on the back here there's some moulded on detail. And that's going to show through there. So that needs to go in like that. And then this is going to glue in on top. And you'll know when you've got it right because if it's wrong it will be sat out too far like that, or it won't go in properly. So I'm sure that's correct. So what I'm going to do is grab a clothes peg and clamp this shut. And then get some extra thin into the seam. let that dry because it's not a wonderful fit but it's uh, with a bit of sanding and stuff it goes together but we just get that like that and let that dry and then we well I suppose now we can put the barrel on when it's clamped can we so the barrel's just going to slot in like so get some glue in there make sure it's nice and solid and I'm also going to go over the um Over the mould seams. Not sure where they were. <laughs> well, I'll just make sure they're all sorted. Make sure the barrel's nice and straight. Just want to give it a little squeeze there. There we go. And in a minute you'll see the benefit of actually having this this thing bent like this rather than just leaving it straight. So um, well, the next thing to do now is to fit that frame on the top. We can't do that while the um, well that's in the way but we can fit this little part here F5. I'm guessing this is like a little gun sight. Have some glue please thank you and that's gonna go like so and it's gonna be swiveled round so the hole at the bottom the square hole is facing directly downwards make sure it's all nice and straight and square There we go. Well, we'll leave that to dry and then uh, I'll come back and we'll do the rest of this. Hey, so that glue's dry now on there. One thing I did change, I said this hole in this part here, F5, had to face down. It actually faces to the to the left to the port side. So uh, you can make that change if you've made the mistake listening to me because I got it wrong. Uh, right, so that's in like that. Now this is now going to go into here. You notice on here I've got two pieces of white plastic rod in there. That's because I cut the there's legs on there that go through in the through into these pieces on the gun, and I actually cut them off and left them on the sprue. So uh, 
clumsy, clumsy oaf I am. So that's going to go up through there. They're going to slide into there. And then this is going to go down. I don't quite know this. No, there's no real position this sits in. Um, I guess it just sort of goes like that. And it's the, it looks like how they've got it in the drawer, and they've got it sort of halfway along the um, where these pins go, and they've got it sort of halfway along with the look of it. So I guess that's it. So drop a cement in there. Drop a cement in there. Just give them a little squeeze, get them in there. And then a drop of cement on the back here. That's that in, and then we've got this part here, F33 going in, and that's going to go, that top piece there is going to fit into that hole in there on the top, and then we've got this gap on the side where that one's going to go in. You'll soon see, when I put it in, you'll see how it all goes. So we'll just put a drop of cement in there to hold that in place. And then that one's going to go into there. And that one's going to go into there. So there we are, so that goes. It's almost like a skid, isn't it? exactly know what its purpose is. It's like a skid though. So there we go. Right. Now, F12. This one here is going to go on the back. And I'm assuming it's going to go in like that. sit on top of that diagonal so I'll put a drop of cement here and I'll put a drop of cement here and that can sit like that I'm guessing I see, yep, goes into a nice little recess in there, beautifully, nice little recess in there, and then it's going to glue onto there, like so. There we are, is that frame around the back of the gun. And there we are. Right. So I think we'll leave that to dry before we go any further. And then we can fit that into this. I've also put this little part here, F17, that little sort of pipe affair goes in there and fits beautifully. So uh, I've also put that piece in there, F45, that little square plate goes in the side. So now this is going to go over the top of here and it's going to clip onto those pins. On the sides there. So now you can see the benefit in having that ammo belt bent. It's going straight up through rather than just going over on an angle. 
Now you would think they would have this movable, but they don't. So uh, this piece here, F1, is going to go. Once again, here we are, instructions as clear as mud. Where the hell is that going? So that's going. It's going that way up. So that's the bottom. So that's going into there. going into there so there's a there's a tiny little recess there for that to go into turn that around let's just get it to gel there we go and now this is going to come round and go into there I thought I got rid of the seam line on that and I can see a seam line still there. The bloody seam lines on this kit, some of them are huge. And there we go. And I've got a feeling that that is supposed to be touching there. Just get a drop a quick setting on here. We can also glue in those pivots as well. We'll just hold that for a while and then I'll come back when it's cured. So there's the gun all done. I fitted the pipe, the little parts off camera because I needed to use the magnifier. But we've got these, you saw me put this part in F1, and we've got these little two parts here F10, F11, and F2. Um, F2 is this member here which is attached to that frame, so it's all part of a frame that's holding the gun. And then here we've got these two parts here and they're beautifully made and they fit beautifully, F10 and F11. That goes in the side in that hole, in that piece we put in earlier on where the hole has to face sideways. Just going to give that a tweak because i got that slightly out of position. And then um, the pipe joins up and then that pipe joins there. So you can see it's all very, very nice. You've got this pipe from here all the way around and there's a join there and then it goes up and there's a join there. So it's, uh, it's very, very nice indeed. As far as fitting this in goes, it fits in there lovely and then you can fit this ring on the top, glue it on and you can have your gun swivelling. But all the time you're building your model that gun is going to be there waiting to get broken off. So what I'm thinking is why have bother having it swivelling, why not just glue it in at the end, just glue it in like that. See, I, mean, I, I see no reason to to not do that, you could just, you know. Um, so I'm going to leave the gun out and fit this panel. Um, I don't think I can fit that panel. Yes, you can. You can fit that panel with the sides in if they're not pushed fully home. But uh, yeah, I'm going to fit that panel and um, basically not fit the gun yet. And I've also noticed that this seam down the side, you don't need to worry about it at all because it's all covered up. The only bit you need to worry about is just here. But we'll butt that up against there, look. And uh, yeah, all looking good. So we need to pull the fuselage together at the front there, which is why I haven't glued it up here yet. So we can get a perfect fit here. So um, there we go. Right. Now I am going to go and get a little nap because I didn't get any, any sleep last night. And I'm going to have a little nap. And then I'll come back when that's dry and I'll do some little bits of Mr. Surfacer in some little gaps. And uh, I think we'll get that primed with some black mister surfacer and see how it looks. I think the whole thing is painted in the the Hilo drab colour. I need to check my references, but other than that, it's gonna be you know a bit of metallic stuff going on, a bit of dry brushing and all that. But I do need to make sure the barrel's nice and straight and uh everything's good. So there we go. But you can't swivel the gun up and down, so I don't see the point in being able to swivel it around really. And I don't see the point in having it on there, just waiting to get knocked off while you're doing everything else. So um, I think I'll ring, leave that ring out and I think what I'll do is just fit it after the build.
just plonk it in there, a little drop of glue in there, and it can just sit there like that on an angle or whatever. So uh, let's go from there. Okay, we're back. So what have I done? Um, while we've been off camera, I've painted the gun. It's been primed in the uh, Mr. Servicer 1500 black, or Mr. Finishing Servicer 1500 black. Um, as you can see, it's it's an amazing primer. It just sticks like everything to the plastic. It's really, really good. Um, I absolutely love the stuff. It's brilliant. So I recommend it to everyone. If you want to see the work I've done, uh, if you go back on YouTube and look at the Plastic Monkey Saturday Night at the Bench live stream for Saturday, May the 13th, 2023, you'll see me working on this and you can like flick through and whatever and, uh, and see me working on it. Uh, but basically, while we were on camera last night, I've um, fitted these photo etch parts here. You have to, when you fit these, they're telling you, this, there's a moulded on door there. They're telling you to remove that door and then add the photo etch. They also don't tell you in the to, it needs to be folded. Um, so you'll see that uh, on, on the um, on the live stream if you want to see those being done. The reason I fitted those, I looked at some E's and they appear to have that larger flap there. Uh, the earlier ones seem to have the smaller door. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to go around with some Mr. Surfacer and blend it in just to soften the edge so it doesn't look like a a piece because you, you can see that there it looks like a piece of glued on photo etch rather than a door so I will be doing that afterwards um, so we've done them I also built up the forward-looking um, instruments here now this panel here I've, I've, I haven't glued all this together you've got two little bits going on the side here and you've got this clear piece going in the back and you've got that box there that box there going in um, quite why this is clear, I do not know. I can see it's got some little round things on. I'm assuming they're lenses, and that's why they've done it clear. But in you know typical Tacom style, there's no bloody colour call. Right? So there's no reason, there's nothing that shows you why that's been made in clear. Um, this piece that goes on top here, this is also clear. Um, and that, you've got to paint most of that. There's just a small lens showing on there. But check your references. Looking here, you've got P66, and this is exactly what I'm talking about with um, with these instructions. The vagueness, there's an arrow. Where does it go? Which way up is it? Where does it go? You've got TB12 down here, this piece of photo etch, and they show you here where it goes. You're thinking, oh, they've, they've, they've got this now. They, they're showing you it goes through, and they show you the final location. They do the same here with these two parts going in here, E51 and E43. They show you here how they should look on the finished assembly, but that's it. So, I don't know. Um, coming down here, these two parts here, which are the left-hand side, this side of your forward-looking instruments, um, they call it C14 and C13 in the instructions. They're actually D55 and D54. Uh, when it comes over here, you've got these two brackets, which are the hinges. This is the... Well, the hinge is the pivot. This is the center part here. It's made of two parts. Um, and that is, they're calling that PE80 and P87. That one's actually P81. Uh, I haven't used these parts here, so I don't know if those numbers are right or not. But I've, I've gone for this one because all the later ones seem to have this, this one. And you can see that I've painted the inside black and I've painted those lenses. The lower lens is painted gloss black and the other one, upper one is silver uh, with a gloss coat over it as well. Uh, and that looks sort of fairly sort of close to what the real things look like. Depending on the angle, they, they seem to have, it seems to change hue like some glass does, doesn't it? This one here is just a black lens. So what I've done is I've painted the inside of the clear part black and then glued it in. And then once it's in there, we'll mask it off and just dry brush the edges with a bit of pink or something. It's, it's got like a pink seal around it. And this one here has a silver seal around it. So we'll dry brush that one silver. But that's all going to get masked up and painted uh, green. Um, or helo drab, should I say? As I say, this one here, as you can see, it's got a couple of it's got a couple of clear lenses there on the right, uh, or a couple of round things. And I'm assuming they're lenses, and that's why that panel's made in clear. Can't find any reference pictures. I'll have to look a little bit harder, see what I can find. But that basically just goes on the front here, um, and it's it's quite a nice fit. It's going to need some Mister Servicer around it just to close any gaps up. But uh, yeah, I mean, the front's not glued together yet, so. But uh, that basically goes in there, like so. 
that goes in there and then this is going to go up through there like so and then that can swivel round and go in like that sorry I've got that the wrong way round so that's going to go like that and that's going to go up under there there you go so there's your forward looking infrared whatever now these parts here as you can see as, as I say if you want to see it being done go back to Saturday the 13th of May um, you can see they've got like a top hat on here on the side and the idea is you glue these two together and then you sandwich those two together around it and then you put this in between what I found was if you actually did that not only have you got the risk of this one becoming glued to that one because it's very difficult to do that seam you also can't get in there and, and sand the seams and stuff so what I did I cut that ring off you'll see me do it as I say on Paul's channel I cut that ring off and then had it going together as just a, a push fit together and what I found was the the um, the actual length of that um, inner area was shorter than it, it, what it is let me get a pencil here to show you what it is these two parts here are going to go over this area here okay so they're going to go over that raised area there if you build it together like this it pulls it together too closely and that won't actually fit in between the two so what I did I cut that top up how off and just made it into a round pin so instead of being like that okay looking at it from that angle I just cut this off so it just became like a pin and then I made a piece of plastic card as I say you'll see it on the channel I made a piece of plastic card glued it on the end of there just to space it out so that I could get it together and it would it would fit nicely so that's what I've done there um, and that all goes together absolutely fine don't forget to paint the insides before you put the clear parts on and then we're going to move up to this once I've got all this painted because once this is in it's going to be quite difficult to um, to get in and paint anything in there especially if it's got to be detail painting so I think there's going to be a little bit of masking going on painting the back silver and, uh, and there we go um, and that's basically all I've done we do a lot of chatting on a Saturday night so not a lot of work gets done uh, what I'm thinking is this ring, where is the ring gone? The ring is actually attached to the gun, isn't it? So let's get that off of there. The ring is on here. Let's get that back in there. I'm tempted to glue this ring into here. And then when it comes to fitting the gun, I've got a much better area to glue it to. So I'm tempted to do that. Um, in fact, I'm going to do that now. So I'm going to put some cement down in there. And I'm going to put some cement down in here. There we go. Plenty in there. Let it get nice and wet. And then let that gel off. we'll get it centralized now that it's gelled off we should be safe to put the gun in there we go so the gun now sits in there lovely there we are so we can just leave that to dry And we know that we've got a nice good solid area now to make the gun to as I say I'm not I don't worry about having the gun swiveling I'd rather have the gun fixed than have the gun swiveling and have it hanging around here and getting broken off and not being able to put the thing down so um that's going to be my plan so now we're ready to fit this panel so this panel is going to go in here and I'm going to somehow clamp the back in place so I think what I should do, this area down the side here is all covered up, so you don't need to worry too much about that. So what I'm going to do is put some cement in here. Just brush that in there, brush that in there. And then grab one of my nice big Rebel Hobby clamps, and I should be able to be careful where you're holding this thing. It 
so easy to break I think there we go I can clamp that on there now I didn't like the feel of that very much what happened there felt like something broke so I can clamp that in there now take some of the pressure off because it's washing it flat Push that over because what it's doing it's pulling the there we go We've got a perfect fit there now on that seam so we just run some cement into that seam there we go just move the clamp around and there we go so we get that back end glued in first let that go off as you can see here, I don't know if you can pick up on it, but you can see that rivet line. If I move the clamp around, it pulls the panel in and out. You can, you can make the panel sort of rock from side to side almost. And there we go. So we're going to leave that to dry. In fact, I want to put that down without touching that clamp at all. So put that down over there. There we go. And leave that to dry. And then I'll come back and we'll finish off fitting the front of it. All right. So we've moved the clamp from here. You can see what a lovely joint we've got there. That's really, really nice. Uh, down here doesn't really matter because none of it's going to be seen. All the way up until the end of these, see these, see this moulded on rod here. It's moulded on bit. It's only in front of that you're going to see, so we'll deal with that. So I've got the front of the fuselage clamped together with this clamp, and I've got the front panel, that panel, clamped in with that peg. I'm going to let that dry solid for a good sort of four to six hours before I mess with it, because we've got a seam that we've got to deal with there, which is, um, which is going to be a little tricky, because we've got a rivet line right next to it. But I'm going to leave that a good time to, before I mess with it, and then I'm going to use... Uh, super glue as a filler if we need any filler rather than uh, Mr. Surfacer because it will sink back. Uh, this panel here, as I said, I fitted that before. I've gone around with the Mr. Surfacer and I've now fitted these in the back. And this is this is here. You've got TPA3 and E6. You've got Q30, which is a clear part going on. I haven't fitted them yet because I'm not sure what colour they need to be inside. Obviously, we'll paint the clear part inside and then we'll cover up the lens when we paint the model. And that'll give us the, the clear glass with the colour behind that we're looking for. It's probably going to be black. Um, so I've put TPA3 and E6 on either side. Be careful, E6 and E7 look exactly the same. They're not. Um, if you put them on the wrong side, what you want to see is when you look at it along the back end there, you want them to be parallel. Otherwise, if you use them wrong, they'll be on an angle. Um, so you have been warned. Ask me how I know. Um, so there we go. Uh, so that's that. So I've got to leave that to dry now for a minute. This panel here, if you remember, we talked about. Doo -doo 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 -doo. I like to talk part numbers so you know what I'm talking about because I don't know what the bits are called. I'm, I'm useless. Uh, this piece here, Q9, uh, it's a clear part. I found one photograph looking up the nose of an Apache, and it would appear that these two round bits here are actually lenses. And that piece up there could be a lens as well. So what I've done is mask them, and then what we'll do is we'll paint paint it all black, front and back, because um, it looks like this whole panel here remains black. So we'll paint that and then mask it off. Um, and the lenses are like a gloss black in behind. So uh, we'll we'll paint the back black, and then we put it on. We remove the masking, and we'll have the the, the masking film, and we'll have the lovely um, colours on there. Then, so there we go. Right. Okay, next day now, and done a little bit of work off camera. Uh, first thing I want to show you is, if you remember, I talked about this seam down here. I said this seam here is covered up, we only need to worry about it up here, but it, that is also covered up because I've now glued these forward parts of the sponsons. I can't remember what numbers they were. But I've glued the rears on here, and I've glued the forward ones on here to make it one long piece. And I can get in with Mr. Surfacer and deal with these seams so you can hold them a hand rather than the whole thing but as you can see when you fit this on it actually covers covers that up so that's cool okay so there's no seam work required at all in there i did notice there was a step when i fit this front panel on here i've just painted it 
um, there was a gap in there. So I've put a piece of Tentho plastic card in there and then got a large flat sanding stick like this one and just, just gently sand it over the front just to level everything out so we've got a nice flat surface for that to go on. I've also sanded the back of this part as well. So um, we should get a nice seam there. We're almost a Mr. Surfacer. There's actually a seam there, so we're not going to sand it. We can get some Mr. Surfacer in here. We get some Mr. Surfacer and some sanding done around here. Um, and then we'll get these all clamped hard in position and then we'll drop some glue into there and get them in. Um, and also at the same time, we've got to fit the undercarriage legs, but we'll, we'll cover that in the next video. Um, so I've actually fitted this part on the bottom here. And you can see that piece of photo at you in there as well. So that's how that goes. So you can see that. And the reason I've done that is there's a horrible step here, which I've filled and sanded out. But also I'm going to mask this in here black because this area, where's my pointer? This area in here remains black and the rest of it will be the helo drab. So I could mask that probably with some masking film. And then what I won't, because if I'd done that and then glued that part in, I might have got glue under the film. I might have got ended up with some light grey paint so I've glued that on so I could paint it black and then we won't get any light grey areas we'll just get a nice um, black green or black green or black helo drab cross this part here this is D14 you can see in the bottom it has a hole and that goes over the pin that goes over this pin that I'm holding there and that pin is two millimetres diameter, but the hole in there is only about one millimetre diameter. So you need to draw that out two mil, and then that will fit nice and snugly on there. There's a clear part that goes on the front of there. That is Q19. I've painted the back of it black. Again, with it all powered down, all the lenses are black. Um, and then this part here, P66, it's like, yeah, where's it going? <laughs> well, it actually turns out that that part goes in show you that part goes in there okay there's a little slot in there that it glues into and then when it's fitted to the front here what will happen that pipe will join up with that motor thing whatever it is there so there we go that's probably a cable drive for the for the swivel or something so um much like a windscreen wiper on a, on a car so that's that, uh, and I've also painted up the art scale kit masks for this come with all the masks for everything, which is really cool. You can see on the back of it, you've got all these little discs for all the lights. You've got all these little squares for all the little bits and pieces everywhere. So really, really comprehensive masking set. It's not just for the, the cockpit, it's actually for everything. So really cool there. You've got the masks there and they fit beautifully. So that's all done as well. So we can get that in the helo drab before we assemble it. And then we can guarantee having the paint in behind everywhere. Because it's going to be very difficult to get the paint in here without flooding it. Sort of, you know, to get in and around and also on the back of here. So I'm going to paint all this with the helo drab before it goes together. Once I'm able to mask that up when the paint is dry. So, um, so that's what we've done there. Um... And that really is about it. The only other thing I've done, if you remember I said I put some Mr. Service around here and then removed it with a cotton bud and I've just sort of sprayed them in black just to see what they look like. And they look great. They look really great. It's worth clamping them in position and letting them dry. So, um, so yeah, all in all, oh, the other thing I've done, I fitted this part here. Uh, what part number is that? It is P50. You can see this little part here. Okay, they're telling you to glow it in there. What you need to do, sorry, what, not what you need to do, what I did. You can see that I've cut the tape away. Come here, get away. Right, you can see there's the part there. And that actually glues into here, and it's going to glue into the side of the fuselage. But obviously, um, it needs to go in that hole. So, dry fit everything up, get it in there, and then I've put some glue around here to glue it to the, the sponson, but not into the fuselage. And then when I take the sponson off, hopefully, yeah, you can see that will come off with it and it's in the right place then. And when we pop it back on, hopefully it will find the hole and go in. If I can find the bloody hole, who misses? There we go. So hopefully that will pop back in there. You can see it goes back into that hole beautifully. 
So there we are keeping the cockpit covered up. Just have another little look at the cockpit if you want to. Or what you can see in there. Blackness. <laughs> so there we go. Uh, I've glued this seam here as well. That's going to be a lot of careful work in there uh, to deal with that because you've got all sorts. I'll just show you that again. You've got all sorts going on there. You've got this riveted panel here. You've got a panel here. You've got a line of rivets across the back. You've got a line of rivets there. You've got a line of rivets there. It's going to be a nightmare to get that seamless, but uh, we'll get there somehow. And uh, also make sure that when you look at it down this way, this remains level. On mine, it was this side was, was higher. No, this side was lower. It was sort of stepped. So I've had to wedge it and hold it and everything while the glue dries just to make sure it all stays nice and level. So there we are. Right, I will be back with part five now, isn't it? And um, so I'm going to let all this dry. I'll get some painting done and then we'll start for part five off. I think we're getting these sponsons fitted and everything. And then all the major building is done and we can start fitting all the little greeblies and bits and pieces then. But, um, yeah, all in all, coming together nice. We've got some choices to make. Check your references. We've got a flat piece of photo etch or a, um, a raised bit. I think it's something to do with radar here on there. There's a little raised bit going on or a flat piece of photo etch if it's been removed and blanked off. So check your references for the aircraft you're doing and go from there. So uh, that's been around about an hour. So we'll call it a day there. And uh, as I say, I'll see you for part, I think it's part four, isn't it? Part five next, this is part four. So I'll see you for part five and that uh, we will be really pushing on with this. So uh, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.